Okay, we have we have some options here. Okay, so for example, we would probably want labels on the nodes, so you can select something like all nodes and say show label. Okay, now we can see that these are that, that this network is modeling people. Okay, and relationships between people. Now we'll take a little time to show that each of the nodes can actually record information about a specific person. Okay, so I want to select this here. Right, and if you click on a specific node, you'll see that if it lets me, it keeps doing this. Okay, I'll pick this one. Um, so what you'll see is uh, in this list of attributes, okay, or fields related to this node, we have data associated with it. So for example, um, priorates, okay, um, a, a a prior was someone was a, a leader in the town of Florence at the time. So each of these nodes will tell you how many times a specific person was a prior. Okay. Um, the links also have data associated with them. So for example, the links will tell you if this uh, structural link represented a marriage, a business relationship, or both. Okay. Now we've talked about modeling. Uh, modeling phenomena with nodes and links, we can actually assign properties to those nodes and links, and here we've done that right, right here in this network. Okay, so now that we've spent a little time on structure and we've seen how we can lay some things out, and we've done a few things like this, let's move one step further and let's talk about the interpreter. Okay, one of the really nice things about GAS and the fact that it's built into NWP is that you can use the command line to get some things done rather quickly. And uh, we're going to talk about what those things are. Okay, first of all, one, one thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that we have some properties that we like to have for most networks. Okay, so for example, in an undirected network like this, we would like to have total degree, right? We'd like to see the degree of the nodes. Uh, we'd also like to see betweenness, okay? In order to do this, um, it's very simple to make this happen. You need to find a node, okay? So we'll pick the Medici node here, or the Pazzi node is a little easier to work with. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to find the name. Okay, now this might be a little bit um, strange. Okay, what we want is this, N10. You may be um, you may be fooled into using something like original label or label, but that will only cause you heartache. Okay, make sure that you use the name. Okay, this is actually the node name, not a label. And all we need to do is basically trigger uh, a function call that will calculate the values that we want. So for example, if we want to say calculate the total degree, we can say n, pardon me, n10, okay, which is node 10, it's the name of, uh, it's the node name associated with Potsy, and say total degree. Okay, what will come back is two. Now notice that is accurate, right? Potsy has two links associated with it. And you'll notice that th the data associated with this node has been updated to include things like out degree, in degree, and total degree. Okay, so we have just added to the data that's associated with this node. Uh, something else that we may want to do, we may want to find the betweenness. And Surprise, surprise, we can just say between this. Okay, and we'll get a, uh, a response. We'll see that there's an update, okay, that will tell us what the between this is. And not only will these things apply to this particular node, but when we click other nodes, you'll see those values there. Okay, and one of the things that uh, I want to point out now is look at the difference between the betweenness of the Medici family and the Pazzi family. Okay, huge difference. And if you compare the betweenness of the Medici family to just about any other family, uh, you will see that their betweenness is quite a bit higher than anybody else's. Okay, so. Once we have these types of things, right, I mean, that's really nice. We have this data, we can use it. But what we really want to do is adjust the visualization 
so that we can actually tell a story, right? Because part of this is helping us explain things about this world uh, that might be hard to learn in, in other ways. So one of the, the tools that we have is we can actually colorize the nodes. Okay, now there are ways to just set a node value to this or that, but sometimes it's really nice to colorize a node based on uh, a sliding scale. Okay, so if you were to compare this to Cytoscape, it would be like the continuous mapper in Cytoscape. Okay, the, the way to do that will be to say something like this. Okay, G, which represents the entire graph. Okay, so I want this to apply to the entire graph. We're going to colorize. Okay, and let's think about what we might want to colorize. Okay, my suggestion is that we actually want to colorize between this. Okay, we'd really like to know um, what, be, what which node is has a higher betweenness than other nodes. Okay, and we'd like to see a sliding scale. Okay, so in order for us to do this, we first specify something like this: node betweenness. And then we'll specify two colors. Okay, now I tend to like blue and red, but you should pick the colors that you think work for you. And when you hit enter, you'll see that the colors will all change. Okay, and notice colors that are close to zero will be blue, and colors that are much higher than zero will be red. Okay, so immediately just by looking at it now, we can see that the family that has the highest between this are the Medici, okay, with 86.6. The next closest or in the 30s, see if I can find anything else, 23, 14. Okay, so clearly in terms of this network, uh, the Medici are by far between more groups of people than than anyone else. Okay, so this is, as, as we'll read, that this would be a structural advantage that they would have, that they would have a positional advantage in this network because of that. And we can show that through our colors. Now, something else that we may want to show, okay, we may actually, in addition to changing the colors or colorizing things, we may want to change the size. Okay, so between this is one measure, uh, one uh, measure of centrality. Uh, we could also use the total degree. That, that's also a way to measure centrality. So let's see how the Medici do in terms of total degree. Okay, I think we know it looks pretty good, but let's let's see if we can visualize that. In addition to colorize, we can do something called resize linear. Okay, which will basically adjust the size of the node based on the value of its total degree. And it would look something like this. We would say G resize, uh, to spell it right, resize linear. And it's roughly going to have the same structure, right? So we want to say sort of node dot total degree Okay, so we, we want it to resize based on the value of total degree. And then, of course, we need to give it some sort of range. Okay, now you can fiddle with this to see, you know, what, what makes sense. Let's try 150, okay, which means at the higher end, it'll be closer to 50. At the lower end, it'll be closer to 1. And let's see what this does to our network. Okay, well, now we've got, now we've, we're starting to see something here. Okay, the Medici appear red because they have high betweenness and they're quite large because they have the highest total degree and in fact if you look at the size okay the next closest size in terms of total degree would be the Peruzzi family which has a degree of five okay so this gives you another way to render centrality visually right we've got the color channel and now we've got the actual size of the nodes and just with the typing of one command we can get this done uh, before I forget I just want to make sure that you know you may have you may develop your own method of analyzing these things and so for example you may want to run standard things against any network that you see if you have a situation like that you can always take these commands and put them into a script and actually just run the script against the network okay so uh, this is one of the few places where we have this scripting language which they call Gython and you can use it to your advantage and actually sort of do some quick analysis on things uh, fairly fairly quickly
Okay. So wh while we're doing this, right, we may decide uh, to make some additional changes. So, for example, we may decide that the betweenness and the total degree are actually showing the same thing, right? So we're making this sort of a little bit redundant by colorizing the betweenness because the total degree really tells the story the way we want it to be told. We may want to use the color for something else. Okay, so one example is we may want to actually use the color to show the number of priorates, right? Because again, we, what we want to do is we want to compare the structural information that's available to the actual data about these people so that we can sort of see how the structure affected uh, their responsibilities in Florence and their actions in Florence and so on. So let's change this colorize to reflect that property and we would say node priorates and then we'll make this blue red. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, and it does and one thing that we see um, that's very interesting, with this new colorization, we see that the Medici do not have the most priorates. Okay? Uh, that honor falls to the Strozzi. They have 74 priorates. Um, and sort of the next closest may be the Medici, or not even, actually. Okay, so there are other families that have more priorates or a similar number of priorates to the Medici family. So what we're seeing here is uh, some, some differences in the importance of the Medici based on their structural position, right? their centrality, they're very central in this network, and yet in terms of the responsibilities and uh, positions of power in Florence, they're not the most powerful according to those terms. So these are the types of things that we want to show with our analysis. And guess makes that very simple. Okay, so we actually can, can see the difference between uh, the advantages of structural position versus the offices that were held in the city. Okay, so uh, I wanted to give some uh, general introduction to what you can do with guess okay and this really just scratches the surface guess is very powerful there are online tutorials and manuals that you should check but I wanted to make sure that you saw this data set because it's something we will talk about more that you recognize that you can immediately identify hubs and immediately identify what we could easily call clicks okay this is a, a very tight click and you'll learn to recognize these structures as you spend more time with networks okay? and, and we will analyze this specific network in just a few weeks.